You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Parasearch UK Radio. Parasearch Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Kerry Greenaway and Mark Manley on the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show, only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening and welcome to the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show. I am Kerry Greenaway. I am the most loveliest person in the entire world. And I am... Jo- <laughs> And I enjoyed in the studio. <laughs> oh dear, they're all shouting in my ear. They're actually shouting in my ear right now. I'm joined in the studio by Mark Manny. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. Uh, apparently, loveliest person in the whole world, my ass. How are you? <laughs> I'm the loveliest person, so I'm amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and we are also joined by Kaz Rooney. Good evening, Kaz. How are you? <laughs> Kerry, and who gave you that crown? I did. I decided that that's what I'm going to crown myself as today. Yeah. I think I'm allowed. It's Friday. Yeah. It's Friday. Well, <laughs> you have a joke on a Friday. <laughs> you've got to have a joke on a Friday. It's Friday. It's the beginning of the weekend, everybody. And I hope you're all very well out there in paranormal land and looking forward to the weekend's paranormal antics. Hopefully, you're all up to lots of lovely paranormal stuff but you should no, be I did here that yesterday. should be here on a friday listening to us live because <laughs> we are the loveliest people in the universe <laughs> oh, oh we are now is it it's not just you it's we, we are now it's is we it? are now is it uh, no, you know, well can... i've got what i've got one thing to say to you then kerry all righty then all righty <laughs> then so tonight we have picked a lovely topic for you guys out there now, it, <laughs> I put it down as animal psychics and um, <laughs> I got shouted, shouted out a little bit saying, what the hell? I was like, I know. And they sort of like took it that it was animals being psychic, not people communicating psychically with animals. But we've ended up hearing it from both directions now. So we're talking about animal psychics. Can, all right, let's look at it from the animal factor. Do we think animals can be psychic I think I think certain animals can because certain, yeah. but I also think that a lot of the um, psychic activity to do with animals. So that was a big word for me. Is also to do with their um, sight sight functions at night with infrared, ultraviolet, and the rest of the light spectrums. Um, so you know, I think yes, they can see things that we can't because we purely haven't got the funnels in our eyes to be able to see it. But cats especially have because cats cats are bastards. I have too. I know. And dogs and, and cats, as you know, will sit there and look pointedly at a fixed spot and just growl or bark or meow or hiss, and we can't see it. So, uh, And apparently Jay Lynch's pet ferret was psychic. So, yes, there you go. Psychic ferrets as well. So um, Jay Lynch has a long, thin, <laughs> long, thin, hairy psychic thing. I expect a lot, really. Up his trouser uh, leg. <laughs> Up his trouser leg and all. It's my brother from another mother. All right, mate. Hmm. We oh. have a psychic pug. We've got a psychic pug. Here's the psychic pug. This is Chewy, the psychic pug. No, I think the um, we are all well aware that animals have extra sense extra senses than humans. We did this. We did talk about this before on a show, which was actually a right, quite a good show for a Friday. Mm. Um, so we did talk about that, didn't we, before about their extra senses and whether or not they can animals sense spirit. So we've talked about that, but can they take it that step further? Do you think, Kaz, and be 
certainly saw. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, ladies and gentlemen, that Kaz, being the lovely person she is, she said this was the best show she's ever researched, and she loved it. It was lovely, 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 and she wanted to do it again. And she thanked Kerry and kissed her bottom multiple times for giving her the task of doing the research for this show, purely based on the fact that she's in love with Squidward, Squidworth and loves calamari. You know what? I think she's, she, she loved it that much. She wants to do it again next week. <laughs> I think you should remember I know where you live, Mark <laughs> You're not that far from me. <laughs> I am. I, yeah, I know, but every time you've been going to come over, so, you know, I am not scared. Oh, small person. Oh dear. Okay, before we get into personal insults and death threats, <laughs> before we get into death threats, uh, let's actually have a look at some of these cases. We're holding. We're going to hold you guys in the chat room on tenter hooks. <laughs> Do you like that pun? Tenter, yeah. tenter cool hooks. Yeah. yeah um, okay. uh, we're going to not talk about the octopus yet or octopi how just many, yet. We're going to wait. You make you wait for it. What? How many times can you be tickled by it, an octopus or a squid? Lots. Ten tickles. <laughs> oh god oh my god oh god it, my brain immediately went but they've only got eight legs oh, god. <laughs> <laughs> clearly i've not had enough to drink yet clearly no. well you no know, jay lynch is talking about his psychic ferret and you know you're, you're quite okay with that Okay, well, I'm not allowing Jay or Rick Rose to jump in on this show because we all know what happens when that happens. It goes to mayhem. I mean, the, the, well, it's a nightmare. Have you tried working with those two together? <laughs> we got, yeah, the three I mean, of you together, Rick, Mark and Jay, oh, my God. Rick, that would be Jay, like controlling there a, a... There is a show. No, no, shush. Sure, sure. There's a show for the future there now, okay? <laughs> Mate, seriously, I am not being on. You, you three can do that one all by yourselves. That would be total mayhem. Hey, it's like, it's bad it enough. Good. It's like an untrained sheepdog trying to trying to round up sheep with them pair when they're together in the studio. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Oh, anyway, fine. Kaz, Kaz, let, let's, oh. let's... <laughs> Why are you picking on Kaz? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you, you, did the, you did the research for this, sweetie. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so yeah. let's, she's like, so, oh, so frightened. Okay, so let's have a look at Joseph Banks Rhine. Let's have a little um, talk about him. What did he do? Joseph Banks Rhine. Is that, a, is that um, a euphemism? I'm just going to go upstairs and knock one off and have a Joseph Banks. <laughs> I don't think so. This is a real life person. He was actually the founder of Moran Parapsychology. Actually, Mark. He's not a real life person. He, he passed away in 1980. Well, he was a real life person. But he's not now. I mean, the only way you can talk to him is ring up, make an appointment, and book him in on a spirit box. Or through a psychic animal, which Kaz is going to tell us all about, Kaz. Or through a spirit. <laughs> no, we're going to let Kaz do this, but she did the research. So oh, let, right, let her have yeah. a moment. Let her have a moment, Mark. <laughs> we, we can rock yeah, out your race venture in a moment. Kaz, 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 carry on, carry on. Do, 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 never mind, Kerry. You carry on talking, Kaz. Go for it, girl. Oh, thanks, Edward. Go on, Kaz. Don't, 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 don't you know. Carry on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold that. Joseph Bank Rhines, from 1930s, now documented, he researched using many methods and experiments into psychic ability, and that included animals. Well done. Okay. Classified, so what... yes. Army files revealed that in the early 1950s, Joseph Rhines was actually secretly hired by the army to find out if dogs, cats, and believe it or not, pigeons, possess extrasensory perception. <laughs> Actually, actually, no, you, you, you bang on there because the um, army thought that because of the pigeons' homing ability, they thought it might have been ESP-based or energy lines-based and they could see them and follow them. And there was a lot of money spent on um, researching how pigeons have that homing um, uh, 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 thing, trait that they do. That bit, I can understand why they would want to look into that and find out how pigeons do that. But that's different from extrasensory perception in regards to like what we're talking about in regards to communication, you know, psychic yeah. communication. It's a completely different thing, isn't it? So I can well, understand I mean, why the army would want to look into the animal's physiological aspects to, which I could mean, improve their own tech, but not 
psychic abilities. Can I just say that I'm um, in regards to psychic animals, um, as we all know, um, my, my daughter has a, a, a pug called Chewy, who is also on Instagram as the Chewy Pug. Does that mean that in amongst all his um, outfits, he's got a Gypsy Rose Lee outfit and a headdress and a little crystal ball? And he she sits there and goes, rawr, 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 rawr. He might yeah. become famous if he did. So let's have a look at this experiment that they were doing, Kaz. All right. Secretly contracted by the Engineering Research and Development Laboratories at the Army's Virginia base, Fort Belvoir, facility, Ryan enthusiastically took up the challenge. According to Ryan, after an initial three-month period of in-depth training with six German Shepherd dogs provided oh, by the it. Army... They were, they were German. They bombed our chippy. <laughs> tests, <laughs> tests were carried out on the beach of the Marshall Ranch on the coast of California in June 1952 using two dogs. The files did not reflect precisely how the dogs were trained to use ESP or even how Ryan and his team concluded that they potentially possessed psychic powers. Well, surely they should have put that in. They were beaten with soft cotton chair and they were put on the chair and they were told to sit there and they have made them making them talk. And this is how they made them talk, yeah? Right, I'm going to tell you. Um, but the results did tell quite a story on repeated occasions dummy mines were carefully buried beneath the sands and the dogs were brought in by the handler as experiment to locate the mines the results apparently were remarkable as Ryan elaborated the success was high enough that it was soon evident that the dogs were alert in the mines before they set foot on the surface above them yeah, they went, See, that... there's a, I can smell the fucking, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell the mine. I can smell the chemicals in the mine. That's not That's ESP. Awesome. Kerry, I was just taking a slurp sorry. of water and you said that and I almost spat. I, ne- I didn't swallow, I spat. Okay? Stop it being bad. <laughs> do, do, I, Kerry? I can't, yeah. Kerry, yeah. missed the whole point. The point was? They can smell the cordite. Dummy Dummy mines. No, but they'd still be able to smell the plastic or something. It was made out. No, no, no. No, no. Army mines back in the 1950s had cordite in it, so they would have smelled the cordite. Ah. Well, there you go. It wasn't a success after all, then. Um, So it doesn't prove, in my head, that just proves their sense of smell rather than their ESP. Well, the Army's previously secret document added that the result of the first day's total of 14 trials was 86% successful on the first day. They do. I mean, animals have a lot more heightened yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, senses than we do, you know. And yes, Jay Lynch, I'm a spitter. Yes. Um, hang on, Kerry, your dog, um, Marley. He's German Shepherd, isn't he? Or half German Shepherd? Yeah. Is that he's why normal, he howls? Though, is he? But is that why he howls and cries and tries to take a sledgehammer to the door every time you fart? <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, he has major anxiety. He has major anxiety, my baby does. Yeah, because of your backside. <gasps> Marky Mark, that's uncalled for and unnecessary, you spitter. That's what he said. <laughs> oh, well, did you I'll just psychically up. pick that up from my dog? Yes, he told you me. Saw... I'll tell you what, though, with the dog thing, see. But it says the, the mains were actually buried under water. They should still be able to smell the cordite, so, or they can pick up on the, on the electrical mm-hmm. uh, currents that are given up. So what are they possibly. saying then? What, the dummy fi- so dummy what are they mates. saying then there, that the fish knows where the mines are and telepathically... No, no we're talking about dogs. No, well, I know, dogs, but the dogs aren't in the water, are they? No, the dogs the dog... are on the boat, surely. <laughs> well, am I missing dogs. the point of this whole goddamn experiment? We don't know. We need to find out. <laughs> they had little Scooby Deer with tanks of oxygen on them, <laughs> like, like like Scooby Doo swimming around underwater. No, yeah. I mean, I, maybe I they were just of... buried in, just deep enough in the water where the dogs could swim in. They were paddling. They were doggy paddling. Doggy paddling. So, yeah, but even so, I still don't see how it proves psychic abilities in dogs i just don't i just I'm, i must be really thick on this one i kind of missing the whole point of this experiment I will. but we don't know the parameters they set it doesn't state the parameters they've set does it um one thing i've noticed tonight apparently jay lynch can make you do anything he's already made you uh do something with it and me spit apparently so we're just <laughs> waiting to see what else he can make you do okay well, you need to listen to the 
the Paris UK radio show on the Paramania <laughs> channel to hear some of the things he makes me do. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> we replay it on a Monday on Parasearch Radio. <laughs> right. Anyway, far more ambitious classified experiments followed with dummy mines carefully buried under the waters off the Californian coast. Okay. Again, the dogs performed well and Ryan provided the military with a glowing c- conclusion. Spit it out there. Spit it uh, out. <laughs> God, it's a spitting kind of night. He's, he said there is at least no way... No known way in which dogs could have located the underwater mines except, except by extra sensory perception. So I don't agree with that. No, I don't. I don't, I don't agree with that either. I mean, I don't but, understand what he's thinking that the dogs tuned in extra sensory perception to find out where the mines were, not using their actual physical senses. I don't see I how he can s- prove this. But the sense of smell thing, I get. But yeah, yeah, if yeah, they're yeah. buried under the water, you've got the smell of the water. The dogs are going to smell, if there's fish in there, they'll smell fish, they'll smell lots of other things. So how did they locate the mines? I mean, they might have been giving off electrical current that they could pick up in the whiskers or something like that. I don't know. That sounded really funny when I said that. Anyway. Um... <laughs> dummy mines. This is what you're not getting. It's dummy mines. So there's nothing so in there's them. no electrical impulses. There's no, no chemicals involved no. in there at all. There's nothing. So, okay. It's basically a case. Of a mine with nothing in it. And just I still don't it. understand how they're saying that that... It, right, okay. So, okay, so maybe... Did they have it, little James Bond watches with metal detectors? It could be. Could be. Maybe they'd metal detectors, I don't know. More than a... <laughs> it could be more of a telepathic interaction than an extra sensory perception. Yeah. Because the people, obviously the men, know where the mines are. Mm. And if you want to be really bonkers about it, the fish are going to know where the mines are. So what? Flipper came up one day and went, hey, ah, yeah, ah, ah, and a German shepherd went, yeah, 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 thank you for that. Thank you. We, we shall go and find him now. <laughs> yeah, I'll just tell my my, my my men that there's a mine right there. Yeah, oh, well, you don't know, do you? I just don't see what it proves. It proves something happened. It doesn't prove you have an extra sensory perception. I don't see how they could go with a glowing conclusion. Well, they did. So, oh, okay. I don't know. Sorry. I know. I'm just putting it out. I will now. say. I will say one thing on a serious note. When you look <coughs> at dog, dogs and cats, when they seem to know what, if there's two of them that have grown up together, they they seem to know what the other one's doing. When one of them gets up to go and do something, the other one's straight on it and knows what they're doing. And I do think they have some thought, some sort of unspoken communication. Most animals do, but it's just trying to figure out how they do it. Yeah, but isn't that just like a body languagey typey? I mean, right. Well, I was looking into why does my dog follow me every single place I go to, right? Even to like, if I'm laying in the bath, that dog is lying basically right up close to the bath to the point where I'm telling him to get out the way so I can get out the bath. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to on him. Yeah. And it's a herd thing. It's because they're pack animals. Yeah. It becomes more interesting when you haven't got a pack animal. I mean, cats aren't particularly pack animals. Well, I don't know. They are, aren't they? Because they hang in groups, don't they? Like, when you think of the big cats, well, you've got some that do and some that don't. Or a pride of tabbies. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, if you, see, if you you know my two cats, the female's a bitch to everybody. So she's, she's pretty much alone now. But they but still top, have that. Even, yeah, but even Top Cat had a posse. <laughs> he had a what? Posse. Oh, posse. posse. Right. Not a pussy. He had a posse. But <laughs> he was a pussy. He was a pussy cat. He was hey. He was top cat. I love that program. Anyway. Hey, <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Now, um, okay. So, mm, mm, flimsy, I would say, unless we had a lot more yeah. information on what the parameters were of that experiment. And yeah. what they are classing as, as ESP as well, quite frankly. I do think that they, they do communicate. I think all animals can communicate with each other without, uh, without, an audible, something, without something audible that humans can hear. No, I don't disagree with mm. that. But what that is is dependent on species. Look at bees, right? They have a hive mentality, don't they? So that a little bee will go off, find a flower, go back to the hive, do a little wiggle outside does the hive. Wig- waggle, waggle. Does his little wiggle, gets... Gets his groove on, and then everybody in the hive knows where the flower is that's got great nectar. And they call it the hive mentality, don't they? Well, to be fair, if I was a bee and I knew where there was some great nectar, 
I'll be going to get it. <laughs> I'm telling you now, if I knew where there was good nectar, I wouldn't be telling anybody where that was. <laughs> we all know where it is, don't we, Kerry? <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. They then did this with cats, didn't they? Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Did they, did did they know, do this I'm with cat. cats? They did this with cats I've as well, got, didn't no, they? Hang on, before I forget, before I forget, before I forget, this, this is to do with this. The Russians did experiments with dogs. They put mines on dogs to see if they would go and blow up enemy tanks. It's a bit sick and sad on the dogs. But what happened was the um, dogs would go and blow their own tanks up because they associated, associated any tank with food. When they tried it with cats, cats just looked at them, sat down and licked their balls and that was it. They also tried it with bats as well. <laughs> oh, dear. They tried. They tried. They tried. Seriously, the U.S. government made little waistcoats for a bat for a colony of bats that had, ex- uh, I think it was, um, explosives and uh, stuff of uh, well, highly flammable stuff. And they just they did it in these bats. And unfortunately, the bats went to the wrong place and set fire to a small town. Oh my oh. god! That's like the original. That's not good. I can't even say <laughs> that. I can't even say what my brain went onto there. Oh, go on. Do tell. I can't because it's really awful. Oh, I think okay. I think everybody must know where my little brain went to on that because I doubt if any I'm the only person who's those wicked, dark, horrible sense of humour thoughts. Um, okay. Clearly, clearly I am. <laughs> oh my god! I've just realised I'm the Frankie Boyle of the paranormal world. <laughs> no, come on! What are, you, what are you thinking about? Bats and bacon. Bats. And no, fire, I'm what? thinking bats and little jackets with. Explosives on. Oh my god, really? See, see, I don't see. want that. Oh <laughs> my god, oh my god. Anyway, they're moving swiftly on. They did this with cats as well. Yeah. Now, cats oh are a different god. species. Complete. I'm moving on swiftly. They uh, yeah. Cats are a completely different. This is nearly as bad as I'm a gimp I last week. <laughs> Henry, Thank you, Henry. Henry, Henry, Henry needs my sense of humour. Come up with a new concept to Ahmed the dead terrorist. <laughs> Hold you in count, count Duckula and to the count on Sesame Street, doesn't it? Jesus Just think about Christ. that for a second. One Jesus batty batty, Christ. two batty batty, <laughs> and like <a> bang. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm literally bright red right now because my sense of humour is clearly very dark. Um, anyway, right, so look at cats. Now, cats, cats in general, when you live with a cat, they are very. This is my house, and you live with me, not the other way around, aren't they? Uh, They're not. Uh, can you train a cat? No. You could train him to use a litter tray. Ask That's about it. it. And they kind of do what they. I mean, I know the cat I had. It was like a pure law unto itself. <laughs> I mean, I always, they I always have um, sort of like base instincts. They eat, sleep, fart, poop, uh, beat each other up, beat everything else up, including the dogs, and go out when they want, to come in when they want, and basically go out partying and having a good time and say, fuck you, you're not my mother, you know? And it's not me swearing that time, everybody. I would just like to say that. <laughs> I, I, fuck you. F-L-U-C-K. Yeah, that don't make you no better, does it? Um, anyway, so what kind of, um, mm, what, did we, what did they discover with cats? They do reckon cats have psychic abilities, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, but that's for a completely different reason, isn't it? Not for checking out. See, I do think cats have got ESP because I did a I did a thing, an experiment, should we say? Um, because my youngest, obviously, we lost our cat um, a couple of years ago, and um, he wanted another cat, and I was like, oh, I don't want another cat. I'm not getting another kitten, right? from baby because oh god I can't I can't deal with the stress of it so I thought right well cats are supposed to choose where they want to be so I sent a thought out to said universe I did a whole beautiful little ritual thing and said right if there's a cat that wants to come and live here then that's you feel free but you've got to be an older cat that doesn't like going out a lot but does go out to go to the toilet because I'm not clearing a litter tray up because the dog is far too interested in that so, and so a cat like Paul Rook <laughs> leave poor old Paul out of it so um, yeah so I did this thing well anyway at the same time next door got this cat right and it was a stable cat and it's like well chilled out and it's lovely it keeps trying to come into my house well there you go Aww. and there that's since I did this little ritual thing now unfortunately 
my dog's not too happy about this, so it's not actually <laughs> able to move in. But, um, yeah, I mean, particularly at the moment when you've got, like, doors and windows open, quite often I'll find him sitting on the windowsill or sitting by the back door driving the dog crazy. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, see, that's interesting. Or is that just because it lived in, lives next door and it just happens to be, you know? Car- carry on. I'm just going to shout at my daughter a second. Carry on. Okay, you guys should just to make sure you mute yourself this time. Last time you shouted at your daughter, you were still live on air. <laughs> <laughs> cats are strange creatures. And yes, there are a lot of theories and myths and legends surrounding cats regarding um, psychic or extrasensory perceptions, isn't it? Yeah. Now, let's, let's move on a little mm-hmm. and have a look at people that claim that they can communicate or with animals, because there's a lot of this. This is a growing trend that we're seeing, isn't it? We're seeing quite a lot of this. I mean, there's a lot of shows. But are they actually looking at the psychology of the animal's behaviour? Possibly. More than anything else. But then, do you remember that I sent you that video, didn't I, of that Anna yeah. lady? I can't yeah. pronounce her surname, so we're not even going to talk to her, talk about her last name. Her name's Animal. She's, she's um, under Animal Spirit. Um, yes. is what she works at. She's not available to be got because we tried to get her um, for the show tonight. Now, she, it was trended on the socials probably a couple of years ago now. And um, in South Africa, they have a wildlife centre saving animals and they'd saved this black panther and it was having major issues with this panther. And they called mm-hmm. Anna in and she sat <laughs> down and psychically communicated with... Diablo, the the leopard. Was it a leopard or was it a panther? Panther, wasn't it? It's black. Yeah. Black panther. And he basically told her why he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy with his name. He was worried about two um, cubs that he had been next door to in the centre. And basically, he wanted to be recognised for who he was. And then the guy who owned the centre sat down, did a bit of communicating himself with it, uh, had a chat, not... I mean, it wasn't like telepathically. He just sat down and said, "Okay, we." Brayton ha- back, Anna Brayton back. I thought her name was Zuzu Bits or something. Anna, yeah. Anna, well, I've got Anna Brayton back here. Black leopard and the animal communicator. And uh, Anna Brayton back. Oh, it might be how you say. It. I don't know. But anyway, her. As I've tried to get <laughs> hold of her, but I couldn't. She's on a sabbatical. Um, but that was. I found that case. If that's how that happened, that was absolutely fascinating. But then I went on to watch another video where she had been communicating with great whites. Um, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. No, but again, it was really interesting with what was said, what she said. And it wasn't so much that they want to, you know, kill people. She said it was, a, you know, we're fishing the, the you know, the, the seas to, you know, their food sources is so bad that half the time they're getting confused and they're defending their territory. That That's it. And if we, it's our mindset going into the water more than because of the mindset we go into the water with, with fear and excitement and adrenaline pumping and stuff like that. If we address those things, they wouldn't attack us because we're displaying the similar um, electrical pulses or whatever it is that their prey would. So it, it's, it's a miscommunication between species. And that's all it is, is what she was saying. And it was really weird what she was saying. And it was so fascinating what she was saying. But you ha- you found another one, didn't you, Kaz? You found um, um, a lady. Is it a lady? Yeah, Raffaella yeah. Pope. Raffaella oh. Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let Mark tell us about Raffaella. Go on, Raffaella. You knew I was just... Raffaella, party on, dude. <laughs> 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 right. right. <laughs> Raffaella Pope writes on her what is... Right on her What is Telepathic Communication with Animals website. Uh, and I shall do it in the voice of a German shepherd. The dictionary <laughs> defines telepathy as cum- communication of impressions of any kind from one mind to another, independent of recognized channels of censure. Hmm. So, th- is this possible between animals and humans? She goes on to explain. My uh, experience is that telepathy is the universal language of the animal kingdom. That I agree with. I believe that uh, humans are actually born with telepathic ability, but tend to suppress or forget it when they learn spoken language. See, now this I believe in because there's yes. been a lot. And you guys don't know about this. Um, a lot of people, their abilities close off as they get older because they're taught that it's not real and it's it's all hokum. But when you when you've got like 
you got like Taylor and Becky, my daughters, and Taylor's got quite a strong psychic ability, as Kerry knows, you know. And mm-hmm. it's it's all how they're brought up and all on the mindset because I brought mine up that anything's possible and to be open about the supernatural. So totally agree with that. Um, where was I? Here we are. Mm, yeah. Telepathic communication assumes that animals are sentient beings with their own purposes, desires, choices, and, and manner of looking at the world. Uh, and yeah, yeah, the German Shepherds do, yeah? Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I don't Would think anybody like... understood the rest of that, but, you know, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I do find this side of things incredibly fascinating. Is this a belief system, though, where we build up that we we have that capability of communicating through images to our, to our animals? I mean, I've tried this with my Marley, and he ain't having none of it. Look back to the Egyptians, and then look back to the Sumerians yeah. and the Babylonians. They all worshipped animals. Yeah, may have but been worshipping well. them is different from communicating with. Why do you think cats are bastards? They still know. They know that they were gods once. <laughs> <laughs> they were gods once. In their heads, they yeah. still are gods. <laughs> but there you know, are, Simon... it, I do find it absolutely fascinating. I mean, when you look at a couple of cases that Penelope Smith um, worked on, she wrote about her communicating with animals. Um, I mean, she talked about a cat that had been left in her care and she was very timid, very scared all the time. Um, and she basically, when she came to her, she had a bite on her back. What was the cat's name? Peaches. Peaches. Mm-hmm. I just love your peaches, honey. I wonder, actually, if that's a, the main bone of contention in animals is the names that we call you, them. Yeah, it when we give them building. names. I mean... That's why cats are pissed off, because they're known as... Mark, uh, like, language. No, like, no. Hey. No, I didn't swear then. Yes, you did. I don't know. I, I didn't. I don't know what you heard, but I didn't swear. You did, um, didn't he, Kaz? I yes, didn't. You did. did I? Mm. Yes, you did. Oh my God! I've been hanging around with Kerry Greenaway far too long. <laughs> um, <laughs> cats, cats are known in the animal kingdom, and they know each other as like Zog, the mighty buffalo killer, <laughs> or um, or Leonardo, the. Um, dog botherer or something like that and then we come up and call them fluffy oh, and they just look at us and and they're just like you bastard i'm gonna have you i'll wait till you're in the shower i know what you did when i had that operation i know what went missing i'll wait till you <laughs> i mean I, don't, I do wonder if they have issues with names that some people anyway anyway getting back to topic um now they clean try to clean up this wound and expect it to heal however peaches would scab it back open again. So it never was healing and it ended up being a hell of a lot worse. Anyway, they called this psychic communicator in for her. And basically, she said that um, she said that if she makes herself ugly and horrible, she, A, she doesn't have to go out because she's injured. So her animal, you know, her humans won't let her out. And secondly, that they won't sort of like bother her because... You know, she's dead ugly. So anyway, when they sort of, you know, sat down with her... That makes sense. I know it sounds silly. That makes sense. Kind of does, doesn't it? Now, anyway, when they sort of, you know, had a chat with her and explained to her that, you know, it's not a problem and she needs to make it grow back and she relaxed and she was like... They worked on her self-worth issues and she ended up being a completely different cat. And other cats didn't pick on her anymore because she grown self confidence in herself. See, see, uh, see, I mean, I know that there is uh, bits, there's people in, in the um, chat room now who are going to be <laughs> oh, raising their eyebrows. Oh, Ashley's in there. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm a tad incredulous at this. It's okay. Right, it's Ashley. okay. He's joined Ashley. at a really good point because we're going to be talking about octopus in a minute. <laughs> Actually, we're talking about Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, <laughs> we're sorry. talking about it's... Peaches, the cat. <laughs> I can, uh, I can, it kind of makes sense, though. Regardless it, of what you think, it kind of makes sense. As silly as it sounds, it does. As silly as it sounds, it, it does sound um, incredible. It does sound incredible. Um but again, this isn't ESP. This is telepathic interaction between people, in my opinion. 
Well, they reckon that animals are telepathic anyway, so that's probably why yeah. you can tele- tele- but again, telepathically communicate. But again, you've got to go through, okay, ESP, telepathic interaction, is it the same thing? Is it different? I don't know, you know. Um, it depends on your perception of the subject, I suppose. Um, right, Kaz, talk to me about Charlie. Charlie. Good old Charlie. Uh, <laughs> At least it's a more Holmes normal name. Who broke his leg and it was in a cast. <clears throat> the problem was that no matter what the vet, vet done or anyone did, Charlie managed to get the cast off. Typical dog, really. Yeah, that's mm. a typical dog. Um, the, do- the vet had said that he would be lame for the rest of his life. He didn't let it set properly. Uh, and with this, P- Nelly Pibbins turned up. She was communicating with Charlie. <laughs> Eventually, it was really, it hang was on, like, hold up, hold up, hang on. She was communicating with Charlie. What? Yeah, I think we got into it. Not that Charlie, Charlie the Charlie the dog. Oh, that Charlie, Cheap, you know, the one, the one with the broken <laughs> leg and all that. <laughs> no, actually, it's, it's not a adapted? Rupert Sheldrake kind of evening. It's a dark it mirror a show. Hang on, you're, you're talking about a Dachshund with a broken leg. A yeah. So yeah. basically, he was a snake for a while. Just remember, it's a woo-woo night, Ashley. Sorry, I'm doing I'm doing a side conversation with Ashley in the chat room and Gary, by the way, because Gary probably knows all of that too. So it's a woo-woo night. Woo-woo. Remember this. When yeah. Penelope woo-woo. turned up, <laughs> when Penelope turned up, Charlie was limping and rather grouchy. And during the consultation, Charlie said he was how he broke his leg and how upset he was with his person. He'd been placed in the front seat of a truck at a ranch. <coughs> uh, that this person was visiting as the truck pulled out of the driveway he saw her walking away <clears throat> thinking she was abandoning him he jumped out the window Hold when on. the vehicle was moving to get back to her and fell on his leg at an angle that is Charlie's self responsibility there Charlie is not taking responsibility for his own actions yeah Jumping but hang on hang on <laughs> but fully communicating about the trauma and reviewing the events, emotions, pain and thoughts surrounding the injury Charlie uh, released his emotional and physical distress then to everyone's amazement he started running around playfully he thought that she was going to abandon him and he um, was trying to get back to her Oh, had he been abandoned before? I'm not really sure. Ooh. It doesn't say that, but... Um, self-worth was, issues. <laughs> Sorry, <was> joking. Explained, <laughs> this was explained to his person, um, and then she got into the habit of when she was going somewhere, if she had to leave him, she would tell him where she was going. So uh, Charlie says, himself, <laughs> Yeah, that's what... Uh, um, Oh, hello, I've got people messaging <coughs> me now. Um, yes, that's what... Uh, yeah, sorry, carry on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you lose, lose the thread there, carry love, go on. Charlie became very affectionate with his person no, no. Um, when he previously acted very distressed about her. His leg healed quickly in perfect alignment. <coughs> and the person realised how intelligent loving a little dog was and how necessary it was to communicate her intentions and actions to him to prevent him misunderstanding and hurting oh. himself. Again, These dogs I... are so lovely. I'm sorry, just <coughs> These dogs are lovely and intelligent. The black Labrador's just jumped on the bed, farted at me and jumped off again and run off and left me with it. Oh, Mate, oh. seriously. I, I try to tele- telepathically communicate with my dog and he doesn't have none of it. I'm telling you now. <coughs> When I say do not eat the chicken carcass, it's going to make you poorly, it does not listen. It goes, I am going to so have that the minute you start snoring. They go, challenge accepted. They just go, challenge accepted. Mm, I'm going to have that regardless. It is interesting, I have to say. I have had um, a pet psychic in to work with my Marley, as I've discussed before. I have to say... Anybody who has met my Marley understands that my Marley is a complete neurotic, anxiety-ridden German Shepherd Collie Cross. Who Just a little is bit. The scattiest dog in the world. You can't stand up without him going crazy. You can't move um, without him going crazy, um, particularly if you are a man. 
Um, and then it takes yeah. ages. Yeah. And once he gets to know yeah. you, he's fine, but he takes ages yeah. and ages to get to know you, like 20 yeah. trips and 14 million cups of coffee. And then he suddenly yeah. goes, oh, okay, you might be all right after all because you've not actually done anything to me in about 20 visits, so it's fine. Um, so anyway, I had an animal psychic come in to communicate with my Marley. And I have to say, it was incredibly strange how Marley acted around her. He sat down. I mean, literally, this dog will go running up to you, barking his head off. She walked in the door. He ran up to her, sat down in front of her, didn't say a word. And I was like... Well, I wouldn't say a word because he's a dog. Well, you know, didn't bark. <laughs> just sat, just sat there. Like, he didn't go, Oi, who are you, girl? I do not know you. Hello. <laughs> he just sat down in front of her and waited, and then she petted him. Now, Marlena, who was there with, as well, me and Marlena just, like, looked at each other to say, what the hell... Um, because he, he knows Marlena. Marlena has been around my house plenty of times. And he knows her. And he still reacts in that way to her. Um, and then the pet psychic was working with my dog. And we did a, she did a crystal grid around him. And he laid inside this grid quite calm. And then she was like sitting there communicating with him. And then she went, she went he's telling me you really need to cry. And I was like, no, I don't. What's he talking about? Like this. And anyway, the conversation was going on. The next thing I know, I'm blubbing like a goddamn baby. And she went, I bet that feels so much better now that you've released it. I don't even know what I was releasing. And um, then he came up and he licked my hand and he was a different dog for a good... She needed, she goes, she goes, I need to do a lot more work on him. She goes, but we've started and like, we've started the ball rolling now. And then she had, she had to move back home. So, um, yeah, it never continued, but, um... All good fun. All very, very interesting, I have to say. Anyway, ha the moment you've all been waiting for. We cannot pass this Friday evening without acknowledging <laughs> one of the biggest events going on at this point in time for the majority of the... I had to say this. The human race, the human race, the male race. All women are going, oh, God, no. All the men are like, hell yeah, let's beat our chests and go England, England. World Cup. Oh, yeah, but I, I don't do football at all. I don't do football. Or... No, no, neither do I. Neither <clears throat> do I at all. However, we have an octopus that can predict... <laughs> The outcome of every match. So, guys, get your pens and papers ready. We are going to give you some serious tips on how you can put a decent bet down on the outcome of games because Paul the Octopus can predict. He's dead. Shut it's up. Dead. What? It's, it's no, dead. no, no, no. You can't tell me that. I've just told everybody that they're going to get like dead certs on bets. Well, it would be dead cert. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's calamari. Damn it, is all I can say. Anyway, Paul the octopus, he was an eight-armed oracle, they reckoned. <laughs> he was actually born in Weymouth in England. And um, basically... Oh, you near Weymouth. Basically, he made predictions about the World Cup. Now, uh -huh, uh -huh. they moved him to the sea life in Oberhausen. Oberhausen? Horsen? Oberhausen. Oberhausen. That's better. Oberhausen. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Um, which is an aquarium well, in Western to... Germany. Now, we all know, and I don't mean any disrespect to you Germans out there, but you're a little bit bonkers. Um, they tested his <laughs> psychic abilities in the Euro. The Euro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's right there. Yeah, yeah. It was the <laughs> Euro. Uh, it was the Euro, even, 2008. And basically what they did was they gave him two glass boxes with the flags of the teams that were playing, Right. <laughs> and then it was they had food in these and it was up to Paul as to which he chose you know which muscle he chose from the tanks with the flags on it and they used the one that he chose as the winner of the match yeah and yeah. he was right a lot <laughs> so they said so they actually sort of like you know <clears throat> He was really good. He actually defined the outcome of four out of Germany's six matches. That's quite a high percentage, really, for an octopus. Well, I've just seen Ashley Nib said face palm, but if an octopus face palmed itself, it would turn inside out. Could you imagine it? Oh my god, I've been palming eight times. <laughs> oh my 
this is a true story. Actually, this is a true story, right? Now, Paul also was incredibly intelligent. He managed to unscrew the lids of jars. And they reckoned that that suggested he had abnormally, abnormally, abnormally even, strong psychic and physical prowess for an octopus. Uh-huh. Anyway, two years later in the 2010 World Cup, Paul's caretakers were determined to see if, if this fantastic oracle ability, you know, was great. There was one in 256 chance that Paul would correctly divine the outcome of each German match. And he did that. In Sorry, total. I've just seen the next one started laughing. <laughs> In total, he went 8 nil in his predictions, even picking Spain over the Netherlands in the World Cup final. Would what a like shame to... we haven't still got Paul on board, isn't it? Would, it, would, would you like me to shout, aliens, now? Or, uh... No, 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 I'm going to give you that in a second. I just want right. to just just finish with Paul the octopi. It's um, to do with Paul. It's to, oh God. He would, don't tell me he was a shape-shifting reptilian alien, really, not an octopi. <coughs> well, funnily enough, uh, <laughs> there, was, there was research done. There were research. There was research done into octopuses and how they came to be and where they appeared from. And basically, five, around 540 million years ago, all of a sudden, octopuses just went bang. They're extremely intelligent. Boom! No, nothing like any other cephalopods we've had. They, they were a completely intelligent, their own thing. And there's two theories as to how they got here and they, it's been properly looked into and they've measured the isotopes in uh, old fossils and everything <coughs> and basically <coughs> researchers propose the idea that uh, either an alien virus crashed to earth in a meteor and infected a population of primitive squid and caused them to evolve into octopuses or another theory suggests it, <laughs> that the fertilized squid or octopus eggs were delivered to earth by a meteor and basically panspermia either that or Squidworthy got jiggy with it I'm not sure <laughs> But there you go. That is my alien connection there. That octopus is cut from another planet and they have a brain in four of their legs. Um, but pretty much like a male of the uh, human species who has two brains as well. Tumbleweed. Well, they have a brain in their, in their head. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, my bloody God. Well, we can't leave the show tonight without giving a nod's head a nod's head Hello, a head Wilma. nod a head nod to texas the psychic horse kaz you're up on texas give us some texas you had to pick on me with a horse oh hell yeah right. we've just done i've just done squids uh, mark's right. just done aliens with octopuses on, now you're on, on psychic horses Cat, right. with, your Scottish, with your Scottish accent, can you do your best Mr. Ed impersonation and say, Hello, Will Burr? <laughs> Not a <that> chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, that's Texas. going to talk about Mr. Ed. No, Texas. Oh, Texas. It's not Ed, it's Texas. Texas. And this one's still alive. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> oh, Texas is a psychic God. horse. Because mm. fate and fortune <laughs> read us messages through his owner, our animal communicator, Holly Davis. Good old Holly. Oh, God. Is she American? Uh, every month you'll be astounded by Texas accurate readings about people and their pets. Lovely. <coughs> uh, Holly found she could hear <laughs> thoughts in her head and start telling owners if their pets were unwell. And exactly what was wrong with them, but only when she was around Texas, you see. Oh, Okay. The fact that she probably was in stables yeah. all day, every day, has got nothing to do with well, it. Well, he's in Texas pets. home base, wasn't he? Wallpaper in his stables. <laughs> <laughs> the pets would also tell her about everyday things, such as her favourite food and how they like to be looked after. Uh, when Texas joined her Welsh small holding, they live in Wales. You could, you could do a change in the salt lick. The straw's a little bit chewy, but... <laughs> <laughs> I much prefer it from that supplier, not that supplier. Can you not get it from Harrods next time, please? Well, Holly realised there was something special. Okay, then. Yeah, I think. Uh, it predicted events that came true and gave her specific messages for people. Soon, Texas was helping her with her work as a psychic and animal healer. Okay. And I, she like said, 
Hang on, I love this statement from her. Can I just say this? Go ahead. He does, and I quote, he doesn't use language as we know it. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? Uh, yes, 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 indubitably, yes. I don't talk like a human. <laughs> I just see Tom Peters right now sitting on his like water bucket that's upside down, sitting on his upside down water bucket with like a pipe and slippers going, Yes, yeah, well, tonight I think I'm going to. <laughs> you know, um, it's psychically connecting to the Dutch and Charlie, who's, you know, a little, a little upset with his cast, and, you know, oh, come on, what really? Hey, Holly, take this down, please. Holly said, Texas tells it like it is. He doesn't pull punches. I don't edit the information. I just pass it on. Each month, this is a cracking bit, Oof. Texas dives into his post bag and selects three lucky people or their pets for a reading in his fate and fortune column. No, he's just got a chance for paper. He face? pulls No, he pulls out a, a letter to chomp on because it tastes <laughs> quite nice. And she wrangles it out of this horse's mouth and goes, right, <laughs> right, Texas, what this one says. And he's like, you yeah. Bitch, I was just about to eat that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know we're taking the Mickey, but we there is a serious side. There's a lot of people right into Texas, so I we are taking the Mickey. We do apologise. We're not being disrespectful. Well, we are, but we're not trying to be disrespectful. Well, we are trying to be disrespectful, but it's a little far fetched. It's a little far fetched, guys. Light of the subject. We're making light of Thank you, the yeah. We're making light At of the At the end of the day, this is a dark mirror show. We are known for being out there and wacky and having this dark around it. Dark we wouldn't be the show without it. But at the, end, at the end of the day, I'm sorry, a horse version of Mystic Meg. Is and, and there now going to be a Shetland pony version of Dr. Ruth? I, you know, I don't know. Oh, no, no. Let's not bring Dr. Well, Ruth back into the room. God. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Ruth. <laughs> Holly, Holly explains... Mm, tell me uh, about I just received his thoughts in my head. He's told me so many things that have come true. <laughs> Texas main aim is to help others. Texas gets it spot on and often leaves readers speechless when he correctly, correctly reveals the past, present and future. <coughs> oh, he does past, so present so and future. Can I, can I say this? I want somebody in the chat room to <clears throat> volunteer to write to Texas. Oh, God. <laughs> let's all let's all that write to Texas. Let's all write to Texas. Oh dear God! Texas is a Gemini. Sports the new wet look hair and likes animals. <laughs> <laughs> Texas is a tarot reader. He can do past, present, and future. <laughs> oh my God! No, bless him. Do you not? <sighs> I'm not taking the Mickey. I honestly want somebody to write to Texas. No, I think we all should. Yeah, let's all write to Texas. Let's all go. One of us might get pulled out by Texas. That's your homework for this week, everybody. Yeah, write to Texas. yeah. Let's all write to Texas. We want to know about our past, present, and future. Yeah. See what Texas. Oh my magazine. god! Yeah, you can imagine. What if it? De- what if that happened? What if one of us wrote in? Texas pulls us out and says, "I hear you've been taking the Mickey out of me on your radio show." <laughs> We'll all be like, no, no, that went us, that went <laughs> us, no. He's actually, no, 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 like hang Mark. on. He's, we'll just blame Mark. He, he, no, yeah. he's psychic. He's actually sat now over in America saying, no, I say, Holly, in, please get the note He's in Wales. He's in Wales. I'm, I am verily vexed. Please, take this down. These humans over in uh, uh, the UK, <laughs> we need to say something to them because they are being thoroughly rude about my ESP. Are you listening, Holly? Holly? Holly, put this <laughs> down and just listen. Mark. Holly. Get off the mobile. What? They're in Wales. They're not in Texas, America. The this is actually is a UK Wales. person. Yes. Oh, David Thomas, you bloody fool. You could have had a bit of water. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Welsh horse. Oh, my fan, we have had such a day. Please take these notes down. I can see the future is going to be orange for this one. I wonder if he's... No, I'm not. No. Anyway. No, um... no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So no. anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay, no. seriously, this this is a situation where we have um, a belief from Holly that her horse is possesses psychic abilities for past, present, and future reading divination abilities. Okay, regardless of what we think of that, um, what Make we a toffee crisp wrapper fall down from the lampshade at all. Oh, my God. It, I find this one a little bit bonkers. I have to say, I don't read Fate and Fortune. 
Um, I wonder why. Um, <laughs> He's got a Twitter page. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Texas. Well, well, my daughter's dog has uh, a, his own Instagram, Ashley. so why can a horse not have a Twitter page? Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> the chat room. Oh, oh he's coming out with some good puns. They're coming. They. Oh God, and he's um, <laughs> at Tech Psychic Horse um, on Twitter. If you would like to go over there and check it out, uh, check it out. Thank you very much, Gary, for that one because I'm oh. so going over to get to give <laughs> Texas the Psychic Horse a little tweet. My actually Before tagging in this. Before we go, I, remember something. Um, I was actually, I follow um, Security in 10 on YouTube, uh, Tyler, um, we interact and we sent, he said a few messages and stuff. He knows his stuff. And one of the videos um, on about uh, last night was, you know, there's water on Mars and this, that and the other. There's actually been tracks of something traced on Mars and it's been seen by the um, probes and everything. Are you going to tell me it's th- Texas, the psychic horse on Mars? No. No, there's actually um, footage of something moving across uh, on Mars. It's fairly big, leaves um, double tracks, but it's all, they don't know if it's man-made, if it's another probe, if it's something that we don't know about on there, or if it's an animal. It might even be the world-famous land squid. I don't know. It might be. <coughs> Frank. Sorry? It might be. <laughs> what? Fake. I don't know. I, I don't know. But um, generally, this guy, like I say, um, when I've seen his stuff, he does straight away poo-poo the, the, the fake ones and this, that, and the other. So it's worth checking out. It is worth a look at. Well, we do need to do a show on um, this civilization, shall we say, that is supposed to be living up on Mars. I'll do it. I know you will, but... Me and Kaz are a bit like, no, we've got so many other topics we want to talk about rather than no, that no, one. No, 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 I've already got your topic, Mark, so... Go on. Yeah, yeah, we've already covered yeah, yeah. you. So, anyway, oh, let's well, get back to psychic animals. I know we're all getting a little bored with psychic animal, but come on now. See, now the... <laughs> 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 let's just finish this show on psychic animals. The thing is, right, it is well known, we all know that animals have senses that yeah. are different from humans, Right. We've discussed that in other shows, yeah? More sensibly than tonight's show, I would just like to say to check that one out. Um, But it is, I do find it fascinating that um, some of the things that psychic animals have, no, not psychic animals, that animal communicators have come out with in regards to animals and then the effect afterwards in regards to the change in the animal. I do find that very fascinating. Um, Whether or not that's just reading the body language or having that same frequency... I don't know, but when we when we get into octopi that can predict football results or horses that can read the past, present and future, my credibility is stretched. However, maybe there's a lesson there. I never believed that people would take a talking mongoose seriously to research and to investigate. I have well, been talking meerkats. I have been well proved wrong on that. Um, from many, many people in the paranormal field. Many, many people. So maybe I should zoom out on this. Maybe we all should zoom out on this one. Maybe yeah, it is a possibility. Just because humans can do it, does that discount the fact that animals can't do it? No. Are we that special? That we Do we consider ourselves as that special that only us have... <laughs> Only us as humans have those abilities. <laughs> I do think I do think animals um, do communicate with each other. Like each species has its own form of communication, whether it be body language, whether it be psychically, or telepathy. I don't know, but they do communicate with each other, and we don't hear it. So there is definitely something there. There is a link that they have to each other, especially family packs that we don't hear. So there's something. I agree. There's something going on, but whether or not it is um, psychic abilities, I don't know. But as I say, maybe we should be more open-minded to the fact that we may not be that special. Maybe psychic or whatever you, ESP or whatever you want to cast it as, maybe more than just a human capability. Anyway, guys. Texas is special. going to forget all over again. I'm not. Yes, I am. Okay, talk about yourselves for a moment. I'm just going to have a little moment. Carry on. <laughs> so, right, cats. Right, going on about cats, Mark. Mm-hmm. For Japan's magnitude 9 earthquake in 2011. Which earthquake? Me- 
2011. Uh-huh. Um, many cats were noticed trembling, trying to escape and otherwise acting restless. The felines yeah. seem to have predicted the quake well in advance. These behaviours were noted to as many as six days before it happened. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And um, another reason, you know Siamese cats? Yeah. Um, did you know that they were actually originally bred as guard cats uh, when uh, in the, for the country of Siam for the emperor? <laughs> and it was also their ability to sense um, uh, things like earthquakes and landslides and stuff like that. And that's why they chose that particular breed, breed of cat. And also they're complete arseholes if you piss them off. That's why they were chosen as guard cats and that's straight up. They was the ability for them to sense uh, natural disasters days in advance and it forewarns the what would be the royal family or whatever you want to call them the kings mm-hmm. of siam for them to be able to evacuate and get out of the area and they're also notoriously vicious as guard animals well here's another one for you flamingos okay. ahead of the devastating boxing day t- tsunami that hit asia coastlines in 2004 Flamingos were among the first species to notice that something was wrong. The wading birds abandoned their low-lying breeding areas for high before the giant waves actually hit. I can believe that. When you think about it, and st- if they're in tune with the earth, because I reckon a lot of animals are, they're going to sense that coming through the ground way before anybody else does, aren't they? Again, mm. it's not <coughs> That's just <coughs> reading the earth's magnetic field. Anyway, um, I do believe that they, oh, we had a competition... Sorry, I don't know. I do believe we had a competition, Kaz. Yeah, for the chocolate factory. For the chocolate factory. And I forgot to pull it on Monday on the on the group live. I don't know if you, anyone saw that. Um, <laughs> I kind of wanted to delete that after I'd done it because it really, well, not my best work, shall we say. <laughs> my brain was completely gone. Um, I had no idea what I was talking about that show. Anyway, 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 anyway. We have a competition running for the Chocolate Factory in October. And I have the, you know, competition entries in front of me. I got that far. I just forgot to do the ripping and scrawling. And I'm juggling them as we speak. So let's pull it. Sam, can I have a little drum roll, please? <laughs> How long can we keep him going on this? Hurry up, woman! <laughs> and the winner is Wendy Johnson. Oh, she can't be. Wendy's already going. Well, she, she she put a bloody name down. So what the hell? No, she commented she was looking forward to it. Well, the competition rules were, if you want to enter, add your name into the comments. She did. Rewind it. Rewind it. Uh, so am I throwing this one over? Am I, am I throwing this over my shoulder and starting again? Yes, you are. Right. God. I think actually half the people that commented are probably already going, guys, then. <laughs> right, we'll get rid of that one. Ready? <laughs> Next out of the hat, then. This could be take us a while. Annika Wall. Yay! <laughs> is she going already, Kaz? Yes, she is. You're joking me! I don't know. They were just saying they were looking forward to it. What you were meant f- to check this. I did check this, and it says clearly, if you'd like to enter, comment your bloody name. Or and they all commented. They got. I know. Carry on, guys, because we're going to be here a while at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> is Annika going? Yeah. Aliens! Fucking... Oh. Oi! Oi! Sorry. Oi! Chuck it over the shoulder, Annika. You're already going. You can't be part of the competition. For God's sakes, people need to read the rules properly, my guide. You know, you lead your horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Maybe I should have got a psychic horse involved in this one. Right. Next out the house. Right. Gary. Is Gary going? Oh. He is now. Gary Bradfield has just won two tickets to the chocolate factory. Bloody Nora. I can't believe we got that far. Yay! Yee-hee! Well done, Gary, darling. You have got two tickets to go to the Chocolate Factory with my very own Kaz, the Ouija Brothers, and a million other people that already entered the competition are already fucking going. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you have missed any of the shows on... He went, don't pick mine out. I'm too late. I've just picked your, your name out, Gary. Gary, you're really going. Boring. Gary, you're going. Oh, my God. He's not on holiday. Why did you comment, Gary? Why? Why? You can donate them, Gary. Donate them to it. two people Love you it. want to. Find two people that would like to go. 
<laughs> Ashley, at this rate, me and you have won this competition. <laughs> Just for the hell of it, because I'm in the middle of it anyway. Mm. Okay, Gary, it's up to you, darling, what you want to do with it. Oh, my God. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to make T and C's a lot more clearer. Don't comment and enter if you're already going to the event. Oh, my God. Anyway, Gary, you've won. It's up to you what you do with the two tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about it soon. Carrie, anyway, guys. Yes. Carrie, God, we're now four said- minutes over. You know you said you can lead a horse to water? Yeah. Yeah. You can only do that when he tells you he would like a glass of water or a G&T. Just remember that because Texas has to tell you first because he already knows what you're thinking. This is true. Anyway, on that note, we bring you to the end of the Psychic Animals and Communicator Show. And we thank you all for listening. Now, don't forget, if you've missed any of our shows, pop over to our YouTube channel, Parasearch Radio, on YouTube. Click a little subscribe button for us. Tell your friends about us. We are here six nights a week with seven shows a week. And um, we have competitions. We have lives on the Parasearch Radio group page, which... We are going to get a lot better from last week's <laughs> um, last week's effort is all I can say on that one. We have got some amazing shows coming up for you. Do not forget Sunday evening we are back in the house. I am on the Spirit Dimension 9 p.m. Sunday evening. I know it. I know it's Father's Day, um, but we'll expect you all to get your barbecues and Happy Father's Day mm. stuff out the way. But before 9 p.m. and then you'll be with me in the show. In the chat room, talking to me. I've got the lovely Sasha Clannett in the studio. A lovely American lady who parasearch, investigates, writes. Oh, she's a broadcaster. She's on TV. She does lots and lots of different stuff. Claire will be back with me this week to um, talk to Sasha. Um, Join me live on Monday for the regular Parasearch Radio group update. You never know. If I get time on Saturday, I may well do a QA and a session on the live. Who knows? We'll see whether my clients um, stop talking quick enough to... Um, Your clients? You know, I have crystal clients, this is. Not, oh. that, not that kind of client. <laughs> That's the other channel. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, uh, I think, have I covered everything, Kaz? Have I I've covered everything? Yes, yeah, you've covered everything. Oh, right. Thank goodness for that. On that note, we bid you a very farewell. <laughs> Next week on the Dark Mirror Show, we are talking about, what are we talking about, Mark? I don't know. Evil the eye. Eye. Oh, it's the eye. eye. Give me the eye. We're talking all evil eyes next week. And hopefully we won't upset too many evil eyes to um, get some curses put onto us. So join us at this time, 9pm next week for the Dark Mirror Show. Oh, on that note, have a great weekend, guys. We'll be back at some point over the weekend. And we bid you a very farewell. I'm going to stop talking now. I've gone into gerbil gerbil mode, haven't I? Gibberish. Um, yeah. For those of, you, those of you who have got wooden eyes, don't forget to paint an evil eye on the front of it, okay? <laughs> on that note, everybody, say good night. Good night, and aliens! Thanks for joining us in the chat room. Love you all. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Go, don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.